Hey everyone, James here. Today going to be doing a special episode, going to be talking about five great, in my opinion, underseen Poliziotesky Eurocrime films. Um, all of these are in the 1970s, the heyday of the Eurocrime films that kind of span the course of 1972 to 78. Um, and for me, I was defining underseen uh, kind of numerically as under 500 letterbox people people have watched this. Um, so there's kind of a range. A couple of these are available with Blu-rays. Some of them, uh, I think they're both from Europe, but uh, they're, uh, but a lot of these, if you know where to look on the internet, you can kind of pull them up. Um, so I think these are all really worth watching. Um, so if you are a fan of the films that Eurocrime offers, these probably aren't going to come off as often as the very top names, kind of your uh, your big uh, milieu trilogy from Fernando DeLeo or some of the big uh, Enzo G. Castellari ones. But I think these are absolutely worthy of being uh, kind of in in the upper range of the Eurocrime offerings. Um, so if you're into Eurocrime and the thing that Eurocrime offers, um, things like the uh, like sort of the B film, pulp films, um, a lot of action, uh, some great scores to it. In many ways, these films are kind of the descendants of the spaghetti westerns, with kind of like additional, um, just brought into a more contemporary setting uh, and feeding from kind of a lot of uh, just newspaper headlines and stuff like that. So there's an element of social commentary running throughout um, pretty much all of these films um, because they are a contemporary set that you're not going to see in the Spaghetti Western. So it's kind of like Spaghetti Western and this are maybe close cousins to it. Um, and this is a much less seen genre than uh, Spaghetti Westerns and Jolly. I'd, I'd say this genre probably runs in third as far as like um, Italian genres go. Um, and it runs a pretty distant third from those top two, who I think a lot of people have seen um, a lot of great jolly films, and uh, a lot of people have not even seen the most seen Poliziotesky films. So I uh, really wanted to bring some uh, light to those films. Uh, not that this channel has a ton of viewers or anything, but uh, hoping that I can at least expose a couple people um, to what I see as kind of these very underseen gems. All right, so first up, I have 1972's Execution Squad. Uh, so this one was directed by Steno, um, who was a director. I think he mainly worked in comedies. Uh, he did uh, one giallo, I believe, that I did see. Uh, tended to, uh, so, so this is kind of his lone offering into the Palizzo-Teschi Eurocrime genre that I am aware of, at least. And it's a really good one. Um, it has a great performance at the center by Enrico Maria Salerno. And this one kind of follows what you would imagine is kind of your basic uh, dirty, hairy, uh, sort of magnum force type plot. In fact, this film is very commonly compared to those. But I think it's a little bit more um, thoughtful about it. Um, so it kind of hints towards that sort of like vigilante police uh, part to it. But it's just a film that's anchored around a really good performance by Salerno. And then it also has a great soundtrack by Stelvio Cipriani. Um, and I think the themes and the way it explores them are good. So personally, I put this film right up there with Dirty Harry and Magnum Forest as being a really good film. Don't want to spoil too much about this film, but I think it is um, absolutely worthy of the conversation up there. Uh, in the Mike Malloy documentary of Eurocrime, great documentary to check out if you're interested in the genre. Um, this is one of the films mentioned along with High Crime and Violent Professionals as sort of popularizing those genres. This film is definitely the least seen in the sort of Anglo sphere of those films. So I think it's interesting. I think part of it is because those two uh, have directors that are more, um, have directed a bunch of other films that are kind of well known in the West, uh, Sergio Martino for The Violent Professionals and Enzo G. Castellari. Uh, for high crime. So those films, I think, uh, tend to just garner just naturally a little bit more attention. But I think this film is probably my favorite of those three. So definitely check this one out. And I'd say it's a pretty reasonable place to start as far as uh, the Euro crime goes. So you can certainly see some of that dirty, hairy influence in it. And also just uh, a lot of that kind of social commentary that's baked into these films. Next up, I have Silent Action, uh, which has 441 letterbox reviews, so also close to 500, but uh, not quite there. This one had a Fractured Visions Blu-ray release uh, last year. I've not seen that that version, but I have heard it is good. And this one is directed by Sergio Martino and stars Luke Miranda, so two uh, definitely kind of genre stalwarts during this time. Miranda, uh, or Martino directed um, 
I want to say like three or four Plateauteskis, all right around 1975. Uh, and Mirinda starred in a ton of them, uh, even more than that. He paired with DeLeo often, paired with Martino a bunch. Um, so you get to see some people that were uh, involved in these films around the time. And personally, I picked this film above Violent Professionals, which has those two regular uh, performers, uh, Martino and Miranda, uh, going on it as well. This one's uh, a little bit more of a conspiracy thriller vibes to it. So 1970s conspiracy uh, and a lot of like um, uh, kind of like backdoor assassinations and stuff sounds appealing to you. Absolutely recommend uh, Silent Action. I think it's quite good and uh, definitely quite underseen if only 441 people have seen that on Letterboxd. Next up, I have I Am Afraid. Only 295 people have seen this. Um, this one is directed by Damiano Damiani. And if you're not familiar with Damiani, he directed A Bullet for the General, uh, one of the more interesting, very political uh, spaghetti westerns of the time. Um, and he's a really good director. And I think those that are familiar with him will know that he tends to focus a lot more on a uh, little bit more of a classy, uh, less of a B-movie feel to his films, a lot more character studies uh, of, of different people. This one benefits a lot from a really great performance by Gian Maria Volante, who probably needs no introduction to fans of Italian uh, genre cinema. Um, he basically, uh, and Voyanti is kind of like famous for sort of being very picky uh, with his parts and only choosing stuff that he deemed uh, kind of worthy, so less likely to appear in kind of your, uh, your like, I don't know, a Castellari film or something like that that's a little bit more B-grade or an Umberto and Lenzi film. Um, so he basically plays a bodyguard here who has already been involved in an assassination attempt on someone, um, and it kind of covers a, a lot of just the psychology behind it. So really, really good film. Um, I'd say personally, I think this is amongst uh, Damiani's best right up there with a bullet for the general. Um, he's done a number of Palizzo Teschies during this time, most, many of which are kind of underrated um, and do kind of explore kind of this different, slightly classier, more character-based vein uh, to the genre that, that I think is what we're checking out too, especially if sort of the pulpiness of some of the other stuff or the more exploitation elements uh, might rub you the wrong way. I think this is all the way on the other end as far as just being uh, just a really good thriller. And if you're like kind of showing this, if you're picking one to show to like a festival crowd or something like that, this is what I would pick. Not that it's like overly arty. It's just a very, very uh, well-made film uh, without a lot of the uh, more lurid elements in there. Next up, I have Fernando De Leo making an appearance on the list. Only 206 people on Letterboxd have watched this film, Blood and Diamonds, not to be confused with, with Blood, Blood Diamonds. Um, and this one is very much, uh, feels like, in continuation of the De Leo films from the early 70s, which he's probably most well known for, so that Mel Yu trilogy. Um, in fact, the, the plot of this is is very similar uh, to Caliber 9, so it does feel a lot like Fernando DeLeo going back to the well. I think this is probably his last very good film. DeLeo um, directed a number of Euro crimes in this kind of very short stint in the 70s um, before sort of petering out in the 80s. Um, probably the director you're going to run into first if you're interested in Palizzo Teschi's. I think Tarantino has sort of been a big proponent of DeLeo's work. Uh, and I think if you are a fan of those early films, don't skip this one at all. Um, this one uh, has a great Claudio Castanelli, who is definitely one of the better um, it work actors working in Italy on these genre films during the time, and a great Luis Bakalov score, who scored both El Vas and Caliber 9. So you have a lot of elements coming together. Uh, the plot kind of covers um, uh, Castanelli coming out of prison. And uh, basically, it's centered around a heist. Don't want to spoil too much, but um, it's it's good stuff. It, if you are a fan of kind of those earlier uh, DeLeos, put a little bit of distance in between watching this because it is kind of similar, but then come in and, and do this one. And I do think it is, um, I think it's one of his better films, and I think it's his probably um, last hurrah in the uh, Eurocrime genre that's, uh, I don't know, that's of a certain quality. I, I do like Killer vs. Killers, but... Um, I think that film is more uh, just a fun romp for me than it is um, a true sort of DeLeo fest uh, as we get into sort of that milieu trilogy. 
And last up, I have 1976, Rome, Other Face of Violence. Uh, so this one uh, focuses on four bandits who do a robbery, and then we sort of learn more about their backgrounds, and we see uh, sort of the background to the robbery and stuff like that. I don't want to spoil too much on this one, but I will say that this has a very clever plot to it, as well as one of my favorite tropes, which is the rich kids uh, doing terrible things. Um, so you, this is definitely kind of a reoccurring theme in a number of these uh, uh, Plichotescis. So I, I have to imagine it was uh, inspired by um, a couple news stories that were coming out around this time. Uh, this one, um, I think is just really well plotted. It's directed by Enzo G. Castellari's father, um, has some good action to it. Um, and uh, I would say that the main thing is that the this one has just really good action that that um, sort of elevates it a little bit more over sort of the average fare and the uh, plot and the way it, it, it's constructed, I think is uh, a little twisted and very well done. And so I think those things help to make it one of the more memorable uh, parts, uh, Euro crime films, and uh, it makes it stand out. If you just were to read the synopsis of this film, I don't think it would stand out all that much as far as being like one to draw you in, but I think it's, uh, I think the way it's constructed, I think it's well above average as far as these Euro crime Plitsiotesky films go. So there you have it. Those are five underseen uh, Plitsiotesky Euro crime films. Definitely recommend you check them all out if you are interested in the genre. Uh, I'd say these five are all very different from one another. Uh, oh yeah, and only 142 people have seen uh, Rome Other Face of Violence on Letterboxd. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, let me know if you've seen any of these films and if you recommend them or didn't like them. I will be curious. Uh, I will see you all next time. Cheers.